Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ahlan wa sahlan, welcome guys uh, Normally this live uh, Q&A is on a Saturday But because I missed it yesterday and I've got some ch time today I thought, you know what, I'll just uh, do it today So, hope you guys are well, hope you guys are enjoying yourself um, Right, let's crack on then So, wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ahlan wa sahlan, amina Wa alaikum as boxing Ahlan wa sahlan <coughs> Okay, let's check out some of the Q and A's that we have. Uh, let's do some curious cat ones. <clears throat> so I don't really like missing any of my sessions because um, I know some people who have serious questions. Some people don't have serious questions; they're just like curious, just to know. But some people do have serious questions, so let's. Have a look at some of these questions. Wa alaikum as salam, Sufyan. MashaAllah, it was good to meet you yesterday. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, as usual. Always nice. Uh, it would have been better if we could have uh, maybe gone somewhere to eat or something. But yesterday was just so packed out, busy. It's hectic. I mean, I finished, I got home about 12.30, 1 o'clock. Yeah, so I was like really drained. And then today I had badminton and today I had uh, uh, cycling as well. So literally from, you can say about 10 in the morning to about 5 in the evening. Yeah, I've just been busy doing all these things. Wa alaikum as salam. Emmullah, ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, welcome, mashallah. Oh, Ellen Salen. Very good. Yeah, mashallah. I really enjoyed the event, mashallah. I met so many people. I met some of you guys as well. I've never met before. Mashallah. It was really nice to, to catch up with everyone and uh, to get to know faces with people as well. Alhamdulillah. Adam, ahla wa sahlan. Wa alaikum wa salam. Wa rahmatullah. Ahla wa sahlan, Adam. Right, so let's crack on with the questions then. So I'm not going to make this uh, session too long. Um, so it's only going to be for about 40 minutes or so. So I'll try to answer questions as I can, inshallah. Insha we would love to come to the Asufa Jalsa. Yeah, it would have been nice. You know, bro, you didn't make the place. You didn't, you, you weren't there, so the place was not, like, there was not, it wasn't enough Ronak there. Let's do on the day trek after your bike challenge, inshallah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be busy all the way until mid-October. So after mid-October, inshallah. Inshallah. All right, so let's uh, have a look at this question. Is home insurance allowed? So home insurance, insurance is not allowed. Basically, insurance is not allowed. However, if you have to get home insurance uh, by law, then home insurance is actually uh, something which you have to get uh, covering the building and all that and just in case a fire or something happens to a next door neighbor you're covered for that so that you have to get otherwise the other types of insurance where you're covered for you know damaged uh, furniture or fruit in the fridge no you don't get that uh, okay <clears throat> Uh, please answer on curious cat is it permissible to say mashallah to a non-muslim when you see them have something good of course yes Yes, you can say mashallah. Yes, you can. Um, okay, salam alaikum. I got peel off Monopoly lottery type of mail. It was basically a lottery thing, but you just peel these coverings off. I did, and I won one of them. Is it permissible to take the money I won, or is it accepting from stuff like lottery? Set? So it all depends what the terms and conditions are. I don't know what the terms and conditions are. But basically, if you are... Basically, if let's say one person is going to donate or is going to give the, the money for the, the competition and then someone else is going to win who has not donated, it'll be permissible. Now, but however, if, for example, it's like something like the lottery and someone gifts someone a free lottery card, then it won't be permissible for them. Yeah, it won't be permissible because they are literally taking the money from that. Um, so it all depends on ter terms and conditions. Yeah, so let me just put it here. Salam depends on terms and conditions. Uh, if it was 
free for everyone, then it's fine to take the proceeds. Okay. All right, next. Would it be haram to sign up to a Muslim matrimonial site which states that you need to a wali by putting a friend contact details? Would it be deceptive if I put contact details of a friend and said, obviously, it would be deceptive. You're asking the question. So you know it's deceptive. Yes, it will be deceptive if they state who the wali has to be. It's going to be deceptive. Uh, can I put my father or other family member's phone number? Because in my culture, there is little involvement of parents in the search of spouse. Uh, yes, then uh, explain to the site, uh, site manager. Okay, explain to the site manager, and inshallah, I should be fine. Um, why do people pray in different places just after they have prayed in their fard congregation? I don't know, but maybe it might be due to um, shifting places, stretch, or maybe to Pray on more of the earth, the ground, so that it testifies for them on the day of judgment. Okay, I sent an email right. Salaamu Alaikum. I'd like to know during, in, in, okay, so if children are listening, please. Block your ears, if your children are listening. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'd like to know, during intercourse, if a husband can kiss the private region of his wife, at, that, uh, at what point does it become so? So, yes, he can. However, uh, he is not permitted to consume any discharge. Do you ever get recognized by people who have been, uh, who you, who, when you have been other cities for non-Islamic purposes? Non-Islamic purposes? Like you mean like going for a walk or going somewhere like holiday or something? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes people, people meet me in places, strange places I've never imagined and then people will recognize me or know my voice from somewhere. How many cohorts have graduated from a sofa? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yes, I don't know how many graduated. Uh, generally, what do graduates of a sofa do once they finish from institution? Are they encouraged to keep contact? Uh, variety of things. Uh, and yes. Uh, is it dangerous for a graduate of Dalit Nizami course to detach himself from? scholars and start doing his own yes it's dangerous it's just like any doctor you know graduates and doesn't affiliate themselves with like a board or something it's always dangerous people should always remember when you graduate from a madrasa for anything for them you should always try to keep yourself in contact with people who are sort of like experts as well just to keep you in lane yeah just to keep you in lane it's been reported in Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi that the Prophet ﷺ said that one of the companions recite al-ikhlas and mu'awud attain Surah al-Falaq and Surah al-Nas thrice in the morning and evening. They will suffice against everything. What is the sunnah manner of reciting these three surahs in the morning and evening? Method 1 or method 2? So method 1 is Surah al-Ikhlas, Surah al-Falaq, Surah al-Nas. Once again, any method. Yeah, all these methods are fine. As long as you, Basically, sometimes when the Prophet ﷺ says something, you just follow what he says. Like trying to get the nitty-gritty and... Okay, you are read this surah before this surah or this surah. I would say just read it however it's coming the hadith, read it like that. Yeah. Any method. Any method mentioned above is fine. Uh, okay. 
All right, let's check out some questions over here. Uh, would have loved to come to these Asufa Jalsa. Is organized. Is Mufti married? Yes. I saw your Arabic podcast yesterday. It was nice, mashallah. Ahla wa sahlan. Welcome. Welcome. Why don't you join us, inshallah? Join us on uh, this Friday. Send an email in and you can join us, inshallah. Emails over here. Where's your cup of fruit tea? No, today I've got normal tea, English tea today. Yes, some nice English tea. I just came back from Atazia. One of my friends' uh, mother-in-law passed away. So basically I went there and uh, show my condolences. And then they had food there as well, so I, I had food as well. Uh, normally after food, I, I like drinking tea in the evening days. When shown in prayers after traveling a certain distance, do you go to a mosque to pray Asr Jamaat at Jamaat times behind an imam? Do you pray four rakats or or end it too? No, you, you got to pray full. Yeah, so if, you, if you're if you a Musafir, so I've explained this in Kuduri. If you watch my Kuduri videos, yeah, boxing. Uh, in there, I mentioned in the chapter of Traveler that if you're a traveler, you pray behind a local imam, you have to follow him from beginning to end. Yeah, you have to follow him from beginning to end. You don't, you don't show on your praise behind a local imam. Also, do we have to pray Sunnah Mu'akkad and Witr? Uh, Witr, you have to, yes. According to Hanafis, you must pray your Witr. Sunnah Mu'akkad is highly recommended if you're not moving about. If you're moving about, then you just have to pray your fard and your witr as a musafir. Uh, what do we say to non-believers if they ask, how do we know the Quran today was is the same as 1,400 years ago? Is there proof? Of course there's proof. The proof is if you go anywhere around the world, the same Quran is the one that's that's been read by all Muslims around the world. Yeah, exactly the same Quran. And historically, you will find all the books that have been written regarding Quran Right, you'll find no difference in the Quran that we have. <clears throat> yes, there's a difference in Qira'a, the way it's recited, uh, subtle differences in certain words. But it's, it's all the same. It's not like the Christians where they have totally different uh, meanings. And what you can do is actually um, you can you can get a book called by Dr. Mustafa Azami. Yeah, so Mustafa Azami has a book on the whole topic of preservation of the Quran. Yeah, it's quite good. Uh, where are the best scholars or madrasas to study under? As Sufa Institute. That's the best place. An Imam was combining Zuhr and Asr Salat during travel. I got there when he was starting Asr. He insisted I could join his Asr with Zuhr intention as I had not read Zuhr yet. Is this allowed in the for Hanafis? Uh, uh, no, it's not allowed for Hanafis. Hanafis will not allow that. So you have to pray you have to basically pray your uh, Dhuhr with the Dhuhr, Asr with the Asr. Shafi's allow it. The Shafi's are okay. Hassan, Ahla wa sahla, Hassan Khan, alaikum wa salam. What is the best method to learn about the gender roles in Islam? I want to learn more about this before getting married. Uh, you know, I think uh, I think Mufti Ibn Adam's got some, some courses on this. Check them out. Yeah. And uh, I don't know who else. I think uh, Sheikh uh, Abdurrahman Mangera, Mufti Abdurrahman Mangera, check him out as well. Mufti is very brave in the way he answers, can be good and dangerous at times. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan. Uh, Zed, ahlan wa sahlan. Hadith says one of the three things to benefit a person after death is the dua of a righteous child. What about dua of a parent? Or, of course. The reason why the child is mentioned is because the child usually remembers the parent the most more than anyone else. Now, obviously, you're going to have friends that make dua for you. You're going to have, you know, neighbors and you're going to have colleagues and all of that. That's that's obviously going to be there. But um, when it comes to when it comes to uh, the hadith, the hadith is talking about a child because child is the one that usually remembers the parents the most. So it's not negating that no one else is going to make dua for them. Is it true in Hanafi Fiqh, if a man and woman joke about being married to each other in front of two male witnesses, the marriage takes place? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, possibly. Can happen. Uh, any Muslim countries? Any in Muslim countries? Yeah, Azhar University in Saudi Arabia, Medina University. Um, and yeah, I think those, are the, those are the ones that... What's Mufti's opinion? Tamim, you sound like more dangerous than me. 
Yeah, you're the first person that's asked me the Mufti Abu, uh, Abu Layf issue. Yeah, so Tamim, I'm going to block you, bro. Yeah. Everyone knows my opinion about Abu Layf. Abu Layf, do not listen to Abu Layf. I always say that to everyone. Uh, abstain from listening to him. But people like Tamim, mashallah, congratulations to you. You're the one that wants to bring up this whole topic again. Yeah. I don't know what's happened to him. I don't even know. Uh, gee, that book is amazing. The history of the Quranic text from Revelation Compilation. Yeah, that's a good book. Is istikhara done when one has a dilemma between two decisions or is it done after a decision has been taken? So istikhara basically is not done when you have two, 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 two options. Istikhara is done when you want to do something. You find out everything about it and then you do your istikhara and go for it. That's it. Yeah, that's what you do. So let's say you want to buy a car. You find out everything you need to do about the car. Uh, you, you, go, you, go, you go for the car, right? And you do istikhara and go for the car. That's all. And that's how istikhara is supposed to. That's what the hadith basically says. Now, some people say, once you've done everything, you do istikhara and you wait for a feeling or a dream. That, is, that method is, is mentioned by some of the scholars, but the one that is the more, I, I would say, the one that is the more easier to follow, which many of my teachers uh, have mentioned this opinion, is the one that I just said to you now. Right? You want to get married to someone, you're not sure about it, find out everything you need to, meet them, the families, everything, and make sure you're happy, they're happy, and then... Um, you know, go for it. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, okay, so tried Jimmy's Kashmiri prawns yesterday. The hot one, they yeah, those are hot, man. Proper hot. Uh, when were hadith start uh, start being collected? When the hadith time you collected, Zed, what you need to do is you need to join my Usul Hadith course. You need to join my Usul Hadith course and there you'll understand. Because in five minutes, I can't really start explaining. They, were, they started to be collected from the days of the Sahaba in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu That's when they were started to be collected. Uh, healthy Muslim marriage by Mufti al -Ramani. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. I didn't know. I apologize. I do apologize to you, Tamim. Yeah, I apologize. No, my fault. I thought you were another Tamim that used to come on here and used to... Say things. Yeah, I do apologize. Yeah, my mistake, honestly. Uh, Ismail, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. If we plan to travel for more than 10 hours, is it permissible to pray Fajr and Dhuhr? To no, no, no. No, you can't do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Those scholars who do permit Jama bain salatain like the Shafis and Hanbalis, and so, they only permit between uh, Zuhur and Asr and Maghrib and Isha. So you can't just like combine any salats you want. Rabbi, uh, is it permissible to learn about slavery or not? Because it doesn't apply. I mean, you don't have to. Yeah, if it's, if you're an average person, you don't have to learn about it. But if you're a scholar, you need to learn about it, about it because there's like ahkam and ruling which pertain to other chapters of fiqh. Uh, same goes with like learning about rulings of wells. Average person doesn't need to know about wells, but people who want to ex become experts. Um. Yes, okay. To be honest, Azhar and Medina are structured like universities more than scholarly places. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it all depends on it. It depends what, what you're looking for, really. Like, you can go to places like Mauritan Mauritania. You can study there for 20 years. Right? If you really got the time, you can go to like places where you want like a, a short course just to get you into a specific area. So it kind of differs from place to place. Please forgive me. I forgive you, bro. I forgive you, Tamim. Uh, in post about Janazah, what does it mean? Not no puri. I have no idea. No puri. Is it a good uh, deed to illegally secretly plant trees on public property? Is it a good deed to illegally? Obviously not. If it's illegal, you can't just go to someone's garden and just plant in. So um, if it's illegal, then you shouldn't be doing it. Should you pray early alone or pray late together with some people? Um, you should pray late with some people, as long as it's not too late. Can you explain the hadith of reading Surah Baqarah every three days and the shaitan will not come to the house? Yeah, so I think you've explained it. <laughs> I'm just going to reiterate what you just said. So the Prophet ﷺ said, in whichever house Surah Baqarah is recited, the shayateen will not go near the house for three days. So it's a good thing for Muslims to do regularly is to read Surah Baqarah and it protects the house from you know bad effects. So you know it's a good thing that 
Muslims read Quran in the house as well. Naturally, the Quran has an effect. It has this nur that we can't perceive with our eyes. That has an impact on demonic influences. Uh, Selu, so I can combine Dhuhr and Asr prayer. If you follow the Shafi Madhab, yes, you can. If you follow the Hanafi Madhab, no, you can't. Kaz, wa alaikum as salam, ahlu wa salam. I know a couple that have been living without each other for six months due to a fight. Are they technically divorced? As long as the husband has not, as long as the husband has not uh, said, uh, has not used uh, like the words of talaq or divorce, then they're still, they're still uh, married. Can the Taliban take the wives of the American soldiers as slaves? I don't know. Wallah alam. You know, the whole concept of slavery, obviously, Turkey and, and you know most of the Muslim countries historically made a resolution, signed a resolution that they were not going to have slaves. Yeah, Pakistan did as well. And many of the ulama have said that even if the new governments do come, they can't, as long as there is that. So this is where I would say it all depends upon what's in their, in their sort of like policies. If you are a woman and your single mother marries another man and then your mother passes away, is your stepfather still your mahram after death? Yes. Yeah, as long as they've had uh, intimacy, then, you know. Can you drink water while re reclining? Yes. Was it 48 miles to shorten pr prayer? Yes. Also, I believe there's a second opinion. From yes, that's correct. Uh, Salam, is it good to listen to music? No. Uh, rolling. Assalamu alaikum. I need to know if I will get punished for having tattoos before converting to Islam. No, you will not be punished for that. No. Uh, I am following the Hanafi school, so what should I do? Pray in qadha. Uh, you pray on, on time. You pray each salat on time. If you think you will not be able to pray the salats on time, right? Like why you can pray sitting down in the car or in the in the vehicle. You can actually pray sitting down in whichever whichever direction the car is going. Waalaikum salam, dear people, what day is it? Yeah, today is Saturday, don't you know? Today is Saturday. Thought you knew? Right? I have to teach you guys uh, what day of the week is as well. So as you know, I did miss yesterday's uh, live. So I thought, you know what, I feel sorry for you guys. I'll just do another live today. Uh, are there any verses of the Quran which explicitly state that self-harm is forbidden? Yes. Yeah. So لا تلقوا بأيديكم إلى التهلكة that is a kind of like, like a verse that's been used by many of the scholars and لا تقتلوا أنفسكم so that means لا تقتلوا then obviously harming yourself will not be allowed as well ولقد كرمنا بني آدم we've honored بني آدم yeah uh, are there any hadith which are both sahih and sari which state that self harm is forbidden um, uh, I can't think of any at the moment. I'm sure if you Google it, you'll probably find something. The Bible indicates that Jesus drank wine in Luca. The Bible also seems to uh, suggest that Jesus approved of moderate consumption of wine in Matthew. Uh, again, I these kind of texts, I am not a Bible expert, so I wouldn't be able to tell you about this. Would you, as an Islamic scholar, say about whether or not Jesus drank wine? I don't know. It's not mentioned in any of our texts, Islamic authentic texts, whether he drank wine or not. However, uh, if the past nations had a particular ruling that was allowed for them, right? Then um, scholars say this would be allowed. So in a certain nation, for example, Adam alayhi salam's children were allowed to marry each other. So even though we call that incest, for Adam alayhi salam, it would be permissible. Yeah, so there were certain rulings in different nations which were allowed for some, some nations, not others. I don't know about the, the Jesus issue. Yeah, so what you'd have to do is basically, you need to get in contact with someone who's an expert in the Bible, who could tell you about the authenticity of these statements and in the light of the Bible. Why did the compilers of Hadith record narrations about actions that the Prophet ﷺ engaged in, which were not necessarily connected to the religion of Islam? Because they loved him. If someone loves someone like a celebrity, you know, and they see someone, you know, if you love someone and you see them and you come back and you tell your friends, oh, you know what? I saw my favorite football player eating in this shop. I saw my favorite football player, you know, uh, smiling at this other guy. I saw my favorite football player, you know, Doing this. Uh, okay. When walking with a copy of the Quran, is there more reward holding the book within the right hand as opposed to the left? No, there's no extra reward, but it's considered to be from the etiquette of holding the Quran. Because the Prophet used to do the clean things with his right hand. Right? So, the clean things with the right hand holding the Quran would be uh, assumed. Right? But 
won't be considered sinful to do with the left hand. <sighs> okay. What percentage of your listeners do you think are from Pakistan? I have no idea. I don't know, maybe 2%, 1%. I have no idea. It's only the, the only ones I know are the ones that tell me they're from Pakistan. Now, if you don't tell me you're from Pakistan, I can't really, you know, do much of a guess. I think maybe, I think maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe, it depends which course as well. I, I do so many different uh, series. Salam, Abu Bakr, ahla wa sahlan, ahla wa sahlan, ahla wa sahlan. Is it permissible to give a child nasal spray which contains gelatine to help with flu? This has been suggested by the doctors. Uh, I have spoken to some scholars about this and they've said to me that there are alternatives available. Speak to your doctor about any alternatives. If there is no other alternative available, like then in that case, and, and they need to take this, which the doctors are highly recommended, then they can take it if there's nothing else available. So first of all, speak to your doctor, speak to a Muslim doctor especially, practicing Muslim doctor, to, who knows about this um, Mufti, Does that mean if we don't read it Does that mean the house will not be blessed Not necessarily If you pray salat in the house it's blessed If you do dhikr in the house it's blessed Is it good to listen to music No, 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 no Abdul Maiz I answered this question already my brother uh, Hassan Ali Can you give some advice to Hufad On how to take care of their voice Especially I am not a Hafiz, so best to ask a Hafiz for that, Hassan Ali. Uh, Zahid, mashallah, met yesterday, alhamdulillah. How did you find yesterday's event? Just wanted to ask regarding the Shabir said, referring to uh, Jama'a Salat. Um, I didn't listen to all of Mufti Shabir's talk, unfortunately. So I don't know exactly what he said. I actually came a bit near the end. Um, so we are you talking about the... the so he was... I, I, don't, I don't know if you understood the Arabic that he was saying. Yeah. Uh, is, that, is that what you're talking about when he was speaking to Sheikh Haytham? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Spend. Does divorce take place if a man says to someone that he's not married? No, it doesn't take place. I mean, I mean, not in front of his wife. No, it won't take place. But obviously, it's a deception, so it's, it's going to be you know, sinful. Why do scholars add weak? Why did scholars add weak narr hadith narrators knowing there was a stronger chain available? It all depends on what the whole aims and objectives of the scholar's book was about. Some scholars wanted to write uh, wanted to write books uh, simply just to collect weak narrations for people. And some scholars collected weak narrations because they knew that the narration is weak, but the practice is established, authentic practice. So, a worker, you need to do, you know, you do ma'usul hadith course. Is marriage or marijuana a crime in Islam? Uh, yes. According to many, most of the scholars, they say it's crime. You did not answer my question. Yes, I did, my brother. I answered your question. Please tell us when you will start the Warwick course, then how long will masters take? I'm worried rock activity is going to have... Yeah, I'm going to, hopefully, inshallah, I'm going to, uh, haven't applied for it yet. This week, I'm applying for it. And then I'll see. Hopefully, I should get the place. It's going to be a 10-week course. It shouldn't really kind of impact me too much. Yeah, hopefully, it shouldn't impact me too much. Um, yeah, and, and the rock work. No, inshallah, the rock work will... What I might have to do maybe is like cut down on things like uh, maybe like the live stream podcasts. So maybe I might need to maybe uh, get other people to do it whilst you know I, I have other commitments. Uh, stuff like that. But inshallah, it won't really affect the rock Do the river really turn into? Did the river really uh, turn into blood during the Egypt plague? During so we don't really have any sort of like detailed narrations from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the blood. We have what the verse of the Quran says. Yes, yeah, so the Quran says, uh, "Dam that we sent upon them blood, dam." So we don't know exactly what that exactly meant. The Semitic, the Bible text tell us that the waters change into blood. So we don't really know exactly how. Was it blood as in real blood? Was it like red in color? You know, we don't know. Uh, people tend to kiss the Quran. Is it okay? Yes, it's fine. It's fine to kiss the Quran. Uh, how are you feeling, Shina Sheikh? You're looking well, mashallah. Yeah, so today I did a 35-mile ride and I played badminton as well before that. So I do feel a bit shattered today. So I had, mashallah, a nice hot bath. 
and uh, mashallah, one of my subscribers sent me um, bath salts as well. Jazakallah khair. Really nice bath salts. So I used the uh, the bath salts today. So it, it felt really good. So if any of you guys do, you know, heavy, hard, uh, strenuous sports, then definitely I would say it's something. Um, so yeah, definitely something which we should try. Iraq has loads of Pakistani students, mashallah. Even they don't come to the live streams regularly. A lot of them say they find it a little difficult to understand your accent. Oh, yeah, my accent's a bit too fast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, as a layman, how should we treat weak hadith? Do not touch hadith. My brother Zaid, do not touch hadith. Lay people should not touch hadith. What they should visit South Africa. I'll probably get fatwas from South Africa on me. South African fatwas. But yeah, inshallah, I would love to visit uh, Yasin. Yasin Kipi hasn't been on for a while. Yasin is always uh, telling me about how nice uh, South Africa is. Cape Town, inshallah. Cape Town, come down to Cape Town, inshallah. Which course do you enjoy teaching most on your channel? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, you know, I think maybe the, the Imam Shafi one, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, what's your opinion on dyeing the hair black? Well, my opinion is the Hanafi general opinion, uh, which many of the Hanafi scholars have taken, which is that if it's for someone who is of elderly age, then it's not allowed. This is uh, a lot of the Hanafis are taking that position. What's your view? Okay, no one. Salam, Sidi. Can you suggest any book on Sheikh Al Hind? Uh, there was a 40, there's, I don't know any books in English. But in Urdu, I remember there was a there's many books that are written on Sheikh Al Hind, and uh, there was a there was a book called I think the Forty of the Kabirin uh, of Dioband. I think there was one of those, and in there there's a, like a entry on him. <clears throat> but I'm not too not too sure. Maybe best to ask uh, someone <clears throat> someone else. What one subject would you like to specialize in? I would like to specialize in I don't know, you know. I think uh, maybe Arabic classical poetry. I'd love to specialize in that. May Allah place immense barakah and success in your studies. Ameen, ameen, zakallah khair. Will studies be face to face? Yes. Face to face. Face to face. It's not going to be online. So I have to go to Warwick. I'll have to study there. He was talking to Sheikh Haytham saying that we don't do amal on it, but I can't recall the dalil. Oh, so he, no, he, he basically, what he said was, he says, uh, Sheikh Haytham was saying he's a Hanbali, or, 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 according to the Hanbali position, delaying of the Asr after the two shadows is considered makru. And he said, according to Hanafi, it's okay. In fact, the Hanafis delaying the Asr all the way to the end and praying the Maghrib early is jam or suri. That's what he was saying. This is, this is, and he just laughed. So it wasn't like something serious. It was just in jest. He was saying it. Can we uh, meet a potential bride in a public place without any company? You should avoid it. Should be avoided. Shariar, wa alaikum assalam, ahla wa sahlan. Hi, Shariar from Pakistan. Right? How many percent of my views on Pakistan? So out of all of you guys, I think Shariar is probably so. How many guys are there here? 27, one. So that means, uh, how much that work out to be? 3%, yeah, 4%. Nothing beats a relaxing hot bath. Yes, definitely. Inshallah, I will request yesterday, like me, when no, when you start your lives, when you're doing Arabic reading. Yeah, inshallah. So I'll, I, whenever I do it, I haven't done it in like a very long time. But whenever I do it, inshallah, I will advertise it on my uh, social media. So you'll be alerted, inshallah. Uh, Zakaria, ahlan wa sahlan, my brother Zakaria, salam. According to the Islamic Sharia, would the death punishment still carry out on a woman who commits adultery and got pregnant in the process? If she has confessed to the adultery and it is been proven like categorically that she has, or it has been proven categorically by four witnesses who saw the act take place exactly, whether it's a man or whether it's a woman, a uh, penalty will be carried out. If she is pregnant, then she has to deliver her child. Uh, yeah, and then after that. I'm reading the Qasas books currently on book four. Is it, 
let's say to do tarkib of each sentence no 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 qasas should you should not do too much tarkib in qasas qasas should be more about becoming familiar with arabic text being able to translate and understand the vocab that's the main thing and write as well too much tarkib is not good yeah too much tarkib i, I personally think it's it, it 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 stunts the students development right certain books should be focused on tarkib certain books should be used for uh, developing uh mufti sahab can necklaces ever uh become halal for men to wear if it becomes a normal practice for men in the society uh i would say no unless it's n it's no longer used as jewelry if it's not used as jewelry like for example watches glasses stuff like that then it would be allowed otherwise no not going to hand if he's a uh, extremely orthodox ulama in uh, out here but a lot of drama make dua I mean, I mean, my Allah make it easy. Should we fight physically to protect our children and wife? Obviously, if someone's going to harm your children and wife, then physical protection, physical protection is something which you naturally do. Everyone would naturally do, and Islam would obviously encourage you to protect your wealth, your family. With this, which subject should I choose for my university philosophy or Islam yet? I have no idea. Sharia, best to ask someone who has done philosophy. Maybe ask. Uh, like Sheikh Hamz, uh, uh, Sheikh Yasser Hanafi, or Brother Hamza Zortis, they have done philosophy. Ask them. I am from Pakistan, mashallah. Wa sahlan. My parents are from Faisalabad, ahlan wa sahlan, mashallah, mashallah. That means three people from Pakistan here. I mean, I think the question was how many people are in Pakistan are watching your, your, your... click the like button, guys. Ahlan wa sahlan, yeah, click the like button. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah Muhammad ahla wa sahlan uh, Ismail Mufti I've recently started to learn the Urdu language what advice would you give me as I'm finding challenging to learn Urdu um, I don't know because I didn't learn the Urdu language in a learning environment I learned it just from listening to people speaking to people just reading for myself I picked it up so I would say um, try to read yeah try to read uh, an easy book like beginners intermediate advanced I try to read and try to listen to a lot of Urdu and if you get a chance to speak to people, just take the opportunity and just speak with them. Even if your Urdu is just messed up, doesn't matter. Yeah, with any language, just go for it. Uh, okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. University is starting soon and my timetable runs from 3 p.m. 7 p.m. with prayer times com coming closer together. Is it like it's likely that Asr time will be missed while in classes? Sometimes it is difficult to leave classes due to discussing discussions and generally it's awkward. Is it compulsory to leave and pray Asr on time? So what you can do is, if it's three o'clock, yeah, let me tell you what to do. What you can do is you can pray Asr in the early time, yeah, in the one shadow. So pray early in the one shadow, <clears throat> that's fine, you can do that. Yeah, so find out what time the one shadow is. And the one shadow, I think it starts in the winter about something like, um, you know, uh, in the winter starts in the UK. I think it's about quarter to two. Yeah, so from quarter to two, three o'clock, you've got plenty of time. You can pray then. And in the summer, then obviously, you know, Asr, Asr you can pray all day, up to about eight o'clock, even 8.30. Yeah, now, obviously, if it occurs in between, I'm sure you can get a little break. Yeah, people are going to have breaks, go toilet or something. And then in that time, try to pray. Remember, always try to see don't worry about it at the moment. When your university starts, then you'll see how much scope you've got, how much breaks you've got. Um, yeah, Allah. Uh, I haven't went to a mosque in a very long time. Will I be punished for this act? No, you won't be punished for this act, inshallah. If it's for a valid reason, I'll be punished. Should we take the vaccine? Many are, are, well, I've taken the two vaccines. So if you ask me, I would say, yeah. Uh, we should not take it yet I don't know Some people who are saying you don't take it I don't know why they're saying it Maybe it's because research has is still premature in this Assalamu uh, alaikum Assalamu alaikum Ahlan wa sahlan What is the roadmap uh, You would draw for a student Who can barely read Arabic For him to get to the level that you are now More or less How long would you take an average 
The role my, my brother is first of all learn how to read the Quran. If you know how to read the Quran, next step is do my Quranic Arabic 17 lessons. Yeah. Um once you've done the Quranic Arabic 17 lessons, there's the email, there's the website, you can check it out there. And uh, once you've done that, then after that you can do Ajurumiya, you or you can do the Tarkib course, or you can do any other course for that matter. You can do Medina books if you like. Um and then I would say <clears throat> like I've been uh, studying and uh, and teaching Arabic for 22 years now. So obviously after 22 years of continuously every single year, you know, improving, uh, you know, progressing in my books, um, a person can catch up to 22 years of, of studying and, and teaching. But uh, you have to remember it's a long journey, definitely a long journey. Start, first of all, start. I, I would say that if a person does like a good structured course, and is focused, they can do in two years, they can learn a good amount of Arabic to be able to read books, but it won't be perfect, but it will be a good amount. Um, should we defend a person we know when we hear him or her being silent? Of course, yes. Um, Mullah, there are many easy to read Sira books in Urdu, which are really good. Excellent. So that's who the brother who's asking about Urdu books. Is your Arabic podcast beneficial uh, for non-Arabic speakers learning Arabic? Of course, this is what who it's made for. How can they benefit from it? They will uh, be uh, barely able to pick up on vocab. Yeah, so basically what you need to remember is if there's someone who's learning Arabic, they need to always listen to Arabic and, and become familiar with how it's spoken. Just like if someone comes from another country, when they start working here, right, what do they do? They just listen to people. And then after a few months, when they start interacting with people, that's why I always say to people, if you're learning Arabic, you have to interact. You have to speak. You come on the show. Definitely. So you're looking at it from a spectator point of view, like sitting back, just looking at it from a spectator point of view. What's the benefit in this? The benefit is you need to listen to it and you need to uh, participate as well. And if you can't part participate with us, then you participate with someone else. Speak with them. How does Islam sp <laughs> explain evil in the world? Hamza Zortis actually has a video on this. Go on YouTube. Hamza Zortis had a video on this. Watch that. Uh, whilst watching your Diwan Shafi, you said it was uh, the third attempt you made. I remember you saying how many takes it takes for you to... I had a thought. Uh, some YouTubers cut their clips in bits and then put them together. Maybe you can test record a video this way. <clears throat> it takes too long. This does. Yeah, I'm, I know what you're talking about. But the problem is when you record, what happens basically is, is sometimes um, you have to, the sound didn't work properly, or maybe um, you know I did it and then I may may maybe forgot to mention something really important. If I do what the YouTubers do, it basically takes me maybe like double, double <coughs> triple the time to edit the video, which is a headache. A lot of the YouTubers they have people that are working for them, so basically. It's very, very easy for them to be able to, um, you know, post edit. Uh, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reject some of the salah according to his quality? Yes. Uh, Af uh, Afzala Hussein, I just finished the Tarkib course. Very beneficial. Can recommend it highly. What shall I do next? Next thing I would uh, suggest that you do is you need to now apply. You need to do a lot of application. So do the Ajurumiya course. Yeah, Ajurumiya is, is the one that's free on my YouTube channel. 25 videos. Go through them. And there's some questions there as well. Try to answer those questions. And you'll see you need to then, after you've done Ajurumiya, then you need to start reading Arabic. Yeah, so maybe some of my series where I've, I've gone through a text, explaining a text, like parts of the Quduri. And inshallah, you, your Arabic will improve a lot. What you want is... You want to be able to read Arabic books. That's what you want. And inshallah, you'll get that. Okay, I'm going to finish now. Right, guys, I'm going to finish. So, because uh, uh, I'm feeling a bit tired as well because I had a long cycle today. Uh, if you're traveling to another country and you are so uh, pressed for time and you will miss your flight, but Salah time is about to finish, can Salah be missed if you thought you will miss the flight? Uh, yeah, so if you obviously, you know, you should have prayed earlier. 
and you know if you didn't pray earlier for whatever reason it was maybe you're stuck in the queue or it was difficult to then inshallah you do your qada Sheikh Ramadan Bhuti has Arabic videos with English subtitles his lectures in Hikam yeah, check down <clears throat> excellent this is a good 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 resource check out if a person is praying salah with jama'ah and reads something in his head that is written on the wall no it won't be broken Mudisab, I have been watching you from quite a long time and you always escape the philosophical, political and controversial questions. Can you explain why? Yes, I can explain why. Because uh, basically, look, uh, controversial questions always open up can of worms. Not everyone is at your understanding, Shiriya Sab, to be able to understand these topics in five minutes. So you want to answer in five minutes, which obviously when I answer it in five minutes, other people will start to get doubts and then I'll have to answer those and then... So this is why the Prophet ﷺ, he, he always advised people to speak to people at, according to their level. If it's a public talk, you, you give a public talk. If it's a more specialized talk, you speak to people in a specialized manner. So you're the controversial one, Shariyar. Not me. You're the biggest controversial. Yeah. You need, to, you need to control your questions. You need to know when to ask a public question and, and when to ask a private question. Have a nice rest of the Ahlul Wasallam. Wa alaikum wa sallam. It's jais for someone to wear the name of Allah around the neck. It's jais, but I would say it should totally avoid these kind of things. Yeah, definitely, because it it wasn't you know it's not something which is supposed to decorate your body with. It's supposed to be in your heart. Mufti, how long does it take to read uh, books of the scholars? Uh, well, it depends how long it takes you to learn Arabic. You are wise. خاطب الناس على قدر أقولهم أهلا وسهلا أهلا وسهلا. How was your bike ride? Very good, thank you very much. Yeah, very long bike ride, thirty-five miles. Next week, inshallah, I'm going to do my. Inshallah, I'm going to do my uh, my uh, fifty-mile ride. So I'm going to put up the link in my social media. So support me, inshallah. The money is going to go to uh, helping poor poor kids around the world. Uh, um, and inshallah, hopefully inshallah, we can raise money to help them. So that's what I'm doing it for inshallah. All right, guys, I'm going to finish there. Jazakumullah khair. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan. Uh, I do apologize for finishing a bit abruptly. Yeah, I am a bit tired as well. And tomorrow I have work. So I've got to do some reading for classes, preparation, and, you know, whatnot. So Jazakumullah khair. Uh, Ahlan wa sahlan. Take care, inshallah. And I'll see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.